what's up my chatterboxes if you guys haven't done so already please feel free to like comment and subscribe please don't forget to share my videos it really really will help me out a lot listen 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 today i you know i just been so busy um looking at the news coverage of the election it just took me a while to get back to you guys with um popping out this review and last week i didn't post the review because you know i had some things going on so i'm back i'm not my head not really in the game but i'm gonna give y'all you know i'm gonna give y'all a review i'm gonna give y'all a review so i just want to say congratulations to the president-elect joe biden and to the first woman of color woman of color let's let's put emphasis on woman vice um president of the united states yes donnie got to go donnie got to go so without further ado we're going um just get into this review of love at the lockup season three episode episode 17 two body bags now we're gonna start off with oh my god sean and damn what the hell is her name destiny we're gonna shot we're gonna start off with those two so it starts all where Sean, you know, had showed the, the the mom and the sister that he had an engagement ring. So he ended up proposing to Destiny. She was like caught off guard with it, but she said yes. She said yes. So she was she was saying that she didn't realize that he was, you know, going to propose, and she hopes that he's ready for everything that entails with her because you know she may be facing some jail time, and she went, you know, she hopes that he's up for that ride but she was getting on my goddamn nerve she was she was because we we see in this episode well she was saying now well he can't leave me now he's stuck with me um it's really gonna be death to his part i'll kill his ass if he do something wrong first of all that because you just because you got engaged and potentially will be getting married to this man does not mean that he stuck with you forever. I mean, technically speaking, you know, we should pick our forever mate. Yes, but shit happens, okay? Shit happens. So stop acting like you're you're in total control of the situation. Now you do got a, a, a you you do got you know somebody that ain't all there. So who knows? But maybe he will get tired of you being possessive and crazy and spending all this goddamn money because you ain't bring nothing to the table. Like I said on my last review but a bag and some ass and you got all these demands you got you know all everything to say but you're not bringing anything to the table you're bringing nothing to the table so he ended up telling her that he wants her to meet destiny i mean not destiny kelly his um kid's mother now he see sure i'm looking at you sideways because you had six kids with kelly and you didn't think that you should have you didn't think that kelly was worthy enough of you to marry uh, you know for you to marry her but yet and still you picked this convict out of jail that you barely know and spending all this money for proposing to a marion and all of those stuff how you think kelly feel about that for, 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 how do you think kelly feel and then you talking about you just want kelly you know to get over it and you know, let you see the kids, you know, peaceful situation. I don't know how peaceful I'll be in this situation because I'm be like, you pass me by somebody that birthed six of your children for a kind big drug addict. Oh, I, I, I would be pissed too. I ain't gonna lie. I would be pissed. So he was telling Destiny how he thought that it would be appropriate for her to meet Kelly. And she's saying, I don't really think that we got to do all this so soon. She's, she's saying, you know, I don't want to be an instant stepmom. It's, you know, I got a lot going on. She already letting you know she ain't really interested in being a part of your kid's life. She really not. She really not. She really not. And you should have took heed to that, but you didn't. You too busy trying to pacify her and keep her around. I, apparently, you must think she's the best thing, you know, to happen to you or the best. I don't know. What's your, what's your um, you know, motive behind letting her get away with as much as you let her get away with? Because just she in the scene, she's talking about how she want this big wedding. And, you know, um, he going to have to pay for it all and all this stuff. Like I said, once again, like I said, she's bringing nothing to the table. But basically taking everything you know what i'm saying but he's allowing it so i can't really fault her for the things that he allowing her to do so she finally ended up breaking 
um, you know, breaking down and saying that she she agreed to see Kelly. Now, her problem is, and she do have a point with that, too. You're telling me that you don't like Kelly, y'all don't get along this and the others. Why are y'all on the phone so much? Something don't seem right. That is true. What, what y'all got to talk about so much if you saying y'all don't get along? Because if it ain't about the kids, what's there to talk about? But to Kelly defense, I got six kids by you. It's always going to be something to talk about. You understand know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't really, you you can't really like have too much to say about it as long as, you know, it ain't that wee hours of the night when the kid, you know, ain't nothing wrong with the kids and she calling and things like that. Now, she calling during the day. I mean, you can't really, you, you got into a situation with men that got a lot of kids. So, be prepared for the shit. Because she talking about, and I don't want to have to kick your baby mom ass and all those stuff. Kelly look like she could throw down too. Kelly look just as white, poor white trash as you do, okay? Try, I ain't gonna say poor white, yeah, poor white trash. Sorry, I don't want to offend nobody, but y'all know that's what they look like. Anyway, so she ended up, um, so she giving him a hard, you know, a hard way to go. And one thing I did like what she said when they sat down to meet Kelly at the table prior to Kelly getting there, she was like, well, let me, she don't know that I'm, that we're engaged yet. She was like, so let me take this ring off because she didn't really, really want to rub it in her face. And I kind of you know, gave her her props for that because she could have been just flaunting in her face, you know, wiggling her finger and stuff like that. No, we're going, let's deal with this and we'll gradually let you know what's going on. We'll gradually let you know what's going on. Listen, that's all I got with them two fools. They, we ain't going to know um, exactly what happened until next episode with that. I don't know. But like I said, I don't know. That's doesn't that's think that she could take Kelly, but Kelly looked like she, she a tough cookie too, so that's that would that would be an inter interesting uh, matchup. Next, we got Chevelle and Quaylen. First of all, we see Quaylen. He's at his mother's house. His sister calling him, trying to hook him up. She she talking about she want to um hang out, you know, get some drinks and stuff. But he already know that they trying to um hook him up with a girl, and he keeps consistently telling them like, "Look, y'all know I got Chevelle at home," but. He gonna meet up with her. He gonna he gonna meet up with her. But we're gonna see what we we gonna see what that bring. Anyway, now we got Chevelle. She in there looking like a sad little puppy, talking to her daughter Myela and asking her, do she love Quaylen? First of all, before you brought Quaylen around Myela and all this old stuff, maybe you should have found you seen what the connection was prior to bringing this man into your house. Second of all, stop trying to put an instant family on that man. You want a father for your daughter because I guess your daughter's father is is MIA. That's what you want. Now you're putting that on that little girl, which isn't fair. You understand what I'm saying? And it's not fair for you to put all that pressure on Quaylen. First of all, he's been in jail for 12 years. He was young when he got arrested. I don't give a crap what he said to you when he was in jail. Your common sense should have told y'all, I'm told you, look, okay, even though he might come out here and mean well, I know it's certain things that he may have to experience because he was, he, you know, he lost so much of his youth in jail. Let me just play my position. You know what I'm saying? Give him the space that he need. And if he gonna hang himself with the rope, then he ain't the man with me. If, if you know what I'm saying, if, if if he choose to do right and you know want to do right, then that's what it's gonna be. But I'm not gonna put that pressure on him. And one thing I can't stand about, you know what? One thing I cannot stand: women get in relationships relationships with these men, and bam, now they want the kid. You know. Calling them daddy if they ain't got a daddy around. Now they, you know what I'm saying? They putting a, they putting that extra pressure on the man. You know what I'm saying to be that instant father for the kid, and that's not cool. Let that relationship gradually build. Like that, that's weird. Like that, that it's weird. It's weird. Okay, and it and it's it's come off as desperate. It really does. And if he, he's going to gravitate to that little girl. Without you forcing that, and she's gonna gravitate to him without you putting that on her. I had to just chill the fuck out. Excuse my language, it's annoying. That annoys the freak out of me, okay? So, 
we see um, Quaylen and his two sisters, they had some kind of bar or whatever like that. One, the um, younger sister invited her girlfriend and she wanted, basically she was trying to get them to to get acquainted. So maybe, you know, they hit it all and I guess they, you know, see where that might go. But Quaylen already told, you know, the sisters from Jump, like he not really trying to like cross the line with Chevelle. And then my thing is, the girl, I'm sorry, and I, the girl wasn't even cute. They saying, oh, she better, oh, she got more going on, and she this and that. She wasn't even attractive. <laughs> and then the girl was like, oh, he's cute. Like, when, when he walked away to talk to Chevelle, she's like, oh, he's cute. And he got all that hair. What did he get into? What did he like? I'm like, oh, she interested. She ready. She ready. Mama is ready. And, you know, he had went over there to talk to Chevelle. Chevelle asking him where he at. He lying, saying he at the mama house. She was like, you're lying because your sister posted the picture and you out. Was she trying to hook you up with her friend? And he was telling her, you know, she stressing him. She, you know, crowding him. She know that he's, you know, trying to get his mind together, trying to build with his family. And then she want to call him every five minutes. So he ended up hanging up on her ass or whatever like that. Chevelle don't, she don't know how to read the room. Get at me in his space because you're going to push him away. That's what you're going to do. So then when he go back to the table, the sister was like, oh, it's saying like you had a lot going on there. They, um, so the other sister was, the sister that was at the um, homecoming party, she was like, oh, I hope she ain't going to have me come um, to Kansas City and um, deal with her. And he was like, oh, no, we don't need that Debo. We don't need that Depot. First of all, the sisters is weird. They are weird. Stay out of your brother's business. I don't know why y'all so against Chevelle. Somebody that was with him, holding him down, making sure he was, you know, financially okay, you know, um, mentally okay. Why y'all got such a bad thing, uh, like like such such a um disdain against her? Like I don't understand it. Like oh, your brother. Okay, she might be overbearing, but your brother is a was a willing participant in it as well. So my job business, my job business. That's all I got with them because they was getting on my goddamn nerves. That's all I gotta say about that situation. Okay, so let's talk about Dylan and Psycho Heaven. Oh my God, I can't stand that wench. I cannot stand her. So we she's flipping out at him. I forgot what the argument was about, but she's flipping out at him. You know, she started driving the car real fast the wrong way. So when she slowed down, he was able like to um, get the car keys out the um, ignition. She flipping mad at him. She cursed him out. She telling him to give her the keys. So when he gave her back the keys, she sped off. She know he, and he was like, cause she was like, just get out, just get out. He was like, I have nowhere to go, Heather. I live with you. Heather ain't give a freak, okay? Heather sped off, knowing he didn't have no money, he had no car, no, no phone or anything. So he asked production to let them use the his can he use one of their phone. He was able to get an Uber. I just felt so bad with him. He was crying in the car, you know, in the Uber. He was crying when he was talking to his mom and his aunt. I'm like, oh my God, Heather, it was bad shit crazy, okay? So he met up with his mom and his auntie and he was telling them what was going on and they basically extended, you know, that, you know, they had to help him. Like, you know, whatever you need us to do, we're here. This is not a normal situation. He was telling them how she was driving all crazy and, you know, real, you know, irate towards him. And they said that that's not normal, which it was not normal. And we find out that his, he's very, like he said, he's very close with his mom and his father. He was like, and his mom was there for him, you know, throughout his, you know, incarceration. But she wasn't able to see him like that because Heather would get mad and saying that the mom was trying to monopolize all his time. First of all, that's his mother. That's his mother. And Dylan, you should have probably seen the writing on the wall when the hell she was acting crazy like that. That shit not normal. Like, my thing is, okay, I might be like, well, dad, okay, I want to see you too, babe, or whatever like that, but I'm not going to get mad if your mom come see you. You need that support. You need all the love you can get behind them bars. Like, what? 
that should have been a red flag. But we don't always see the signs when they happen. At you know, we we don't always see it. You know, if we could foresee the future, a lot of shit that happened to us in our life, we wouldn't even be going through it. So I'm gonna give you a pass on that one. So, you know, he was telling the mom like, y'all might think I'm stupid. He was like, but you know, she was there for me and she did everything that she could to keep me around for those five years and now i'm out and we can't even stay together for two days and he actually still really wanted to be with heather he was like you know he didn't just want to give up on her run dylan run she is bad shit crazy okay no one is going to fault you for leaving her alone she is psychotic okay and from what I hear, he got a new girl and everything and all as well in Dylan Land. But that one right there is crazy and she needs to seek mental help. All that, you know, trauma and her when she was younger, that shit, it made her, it made her crazy. So she needs to seek professional help. She really, really does. And I just feel so bad for Dylan. Like to watch him cry and get emotional and, you know, show his vulnerable side. That stuff had to hurt. It really does. But Dylan, if you can hear this video, keep your head up, keep moving. I seen your Instagram page. You look like you doing a hundred percent better, and and keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. We ain't gonna let that. We ain't gonna let that hold us down. You know what I'm saying? You ain't the first, and you ain't the last that got caught up with some nonsense. But you lived this. You live. You survived it. You survived. So now we got John and Christiana. I'm sorry, John is such an enabler. It's not even funny. Christiana would have been better if he would have just let her go and get a goddamn job. Let her do what she was to do in the halfway house so you guys could have went on with your life. No, you want to, you know, sneak time with her, you know, driving her to the places she's supposed to get, get court in the diner, you know, eating and she, you know, getting on lockdown and all this old crap. You, you, it, it, it's a sad story. It's a sad story. It, it really is. So these two, and I don't know about y'all, but it grossed me out seeing them kissing and, you know, about to get get it on. Soon when they go into the guy thing on motel or hotel, whatever the hell it was, they start going at it like cats and dogs. Neither one of them jumped in the shower. He looked, and don't tell, and I don't want nobody to say, oh, well, maybe they got washed prior to leaving. His hair looked like he, he ain't washed it in months. He, his hair was greasy, dirty, and everything else. So, I don't, I'm not buying it. They get right into it looking gross, okay? And she was saying how she good at, you know, giving blowjobs and stuff like that. I couldn't, I can't even picture it, and I don't want to picture it, okay? I really, really don't. So, they get bit they gets busy. But prior to even going to the hotel, how she was saying how he's such a, you know, blessing to him, to her and her family, how he's, you know, done so much. And he was like, Well, I really don't feel like I've done enough. And she was like, Yeah, you really did a lot. And she got his age mixed up. She said he was 49. He was like, uh uh, nope, I'm 46. I ain't trying to get to that 50 mark just yet. And I'm like, Well, goddamn, y'all don't know each other. Eh? <laughs> or whatever but you know i'm gonna give her a little pass she going through a lot she going through a lot so like i said they had did what they had to do in the hotel room it was gross he was like after it was all done and everything he was like oh it was wonderful like he <laughs> I, guess, I guess she put it on him or whatever because they would you know he, he was all in a rush to consummate the marriage and all that other stuff. But I don't even think they was together that got dig all along. Like, I think he recently just met her. Anyway, I don't know. They too much. So, she was supposed to be turning herself in. Now, she's talking to him saying that she don't want to turn herself in um, on um, today, which is the day that they were, you know, doing what they was doing. She wanted to wait, it into, wait until the next step. And John was like, well, I think that's just going to make it that much harder. But I understand that, you know enabling her again because he should have said you know what no i'm a felon you can risk me going back to jail and if i'm in jail everything shut down you will have this you know face the music and turn yourself in no he didn't do that he passed the fire talking about okay well you know you can spend the night with us you know 
because he's telling the mom, because now they back at the house, he's telling the mom and sister, I think it's a good thing. She could spend time with mom. He could spend th time with sis and then me. No, no. Like the sister said, like, listen, I don't think it's a good idea. She was saying to the confession, she was like, I don't think it's a good idea. She was like, she's a um, giant felon. She could put all of them in, you know, at risk for basically harming the fugitive. Even though she got the meth face, the meth teeth, sister was talking some sense. She, that because she looked like she methed out. She was talking some sense. And they got a little um, comfortable space there, apparently, you know, from where they come from. John House is, is, is real comfortable, you know, compared to what they used to. So she ain't trying to mess that up. So the mom, first, the mom was going along with Christiana. Then she started trying, taking the sister side, saying, well, yeah, you know, maybe it's not a good idea for, you know, you know, to keep put, you know, putting it off. Christiana was like, I just want one more night with my family, you know, and I don't want to think about it. Listen, I don't know what's up with Christiana. I don't know if she's still in jail. I don't know what the, you know, particulars of it is. But what I do know is her and John ain't meant for each other. John lets Christiana do whatever she wants. He don't hold her accountable for her actions. And he, he pacify everything. And that's not helping her. She needs help, okay? She needs help, and you're not the person to help her. Let her go. Let her go. So now we got Jessica, her mother, and her friend Tiffany. They're at the bridal shop um, because they want to have a formal wedding now because, it's, you know, Maurice and Jessica both told us the story prior to that they got married in jail regular clothes it was like no, nothing um romantic about it so they want to do it over they want to do it right the, the dad gave her money to buy her a ring he gave her you know a pretty decent ring and now she's looking for you know for a dress so she puts on this dress because she wanted something that was like kind of fitting she puts on this dress and she couldn't fit it so she was like upset so the mom asked her what was wrong well I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. The dress didn't fit, but it wasn't until the lady offered them some champagne and she was saying that, uh, Jessica said that she didn't want anything to drink, so the mom was kind of pressing her on her and was like, was well, everything okay? Why are you not drinking this and the other? So Jessica ended up telling her that they were pregnant. And she said six weeks, so... I guess she, I guess she end up going to a doctor's appointment in between, you know, shows or whatever. So her mom was like, "Well, how many people know Tiffany? Did you know?" So Tiffany said, "Well, I just found out today." So the mom was excited, but she did have to say, "Well, um, I guess we got to get a jump on that job, you know, <laughs> so because Maurice don't got no job." Like the mom said, they got a lot on their plate right now. About to have a baby, you you throwing away, and you gotta get it together. So she was excited. She, the mom handled it way better than what the dad did because the dad first was looking like, uh, and he said from the gate, I'm not going to be that kid daddy, okay? I'm not going to be that kid daddy. So Jessica is, you know, she's hoping that her sister will be there, you know, to support her in the marriage because when she found out that Jessica was with Maurice and marrying somebody that was in jail, the sister completely cut her off. So her mom was like, well, you know, I raised two strong girls and, you know, maybe y'all get it together or something like that. I hope, you know, I hope for Jessica's um, sake that her and her sister can, you know, reconcile. So she, you know, she can come to the wedding and support her sister. And Jessica was like, I hope my mom told her that I was, you know, that I'm pregnant because maybe that, you know, bring her around. We shall see. But it do looks like that she's going to be at the wedding. So maybe... You know, the sister came around to being involved in Jessica's life. Like, come on. Like, that's Jessica's life. It ain't your life. What you got? Like, why are you disowning your sister for her wanting to mess with him? He ain't. He was, like, that, that's her life. It ain't like he was a rapist or a killer. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. So, moving on from that, now we got Lindsay and Scott. So, Lindsay is gearing up to meet her friend, Tara Bell. She grew up in her hometown. They did some time together. But you remember when Lindsay was saying that she had a secret and, you know, she wasn't really trying to reveal it? Well, I think we all 
know what the secret is now because when Tara Bell came and they were talking Tara Bell asked her do he know what our relationship is and she was like no so apparently I mean this is all alleged this is you know me speculating but you know I'm not stupid I think they are lovers or have been lovers and it kind of give you an understanding as to why Tara Bell was kind of like dogging um Scott a little bit she was like well give me a reason to like him um well maybe he feel like you he don't want you to know how much money he got because you know you might steal it then she was saying well you are kind of out of his league physically like she was throwing a lot of little daggers at Scott and I'm like where all this coming from you know what I'm saying Mm, I don't know. So now mm -hmm. I see where the shade come from. And then she bought Lindsay all this makeup. Lindsay said this got to be like over two hundred dollars worth. So she bought her she bought her girl some makeup. She coming to you know check out the competition <laughs> or whatever. So Lindsay was telling her how she was upset because it seemed like he you know putting the gear and um and drive. Now that she's home, she was like, but would have. What would have happened if it wasn't Corona? She wouldn't have had nowhere to bring, you know, her daughter. And she not really feeling it. And so, t t and Tara Lynn basically said, um, Tara Bell, Tara Bell. She said to the producers that Lindsay is all about the money. If you ain't going to give her no money, she's going to find somebody that, that will. Point blank, period. So, Lindsay only probably capitated, to, um, you know, staying at their house because she capitated to their house because of her um, restrictions on the home house arrest but soon as she get off house arrest she gonna find her another mark trust me trust me she gonna find her another mark especially if scott not really trying to show her the money and i really don't think scott has money because you remember and i'm gonna keep reiterating when we first was introduced to him and he had this interior decorated decorator he was telling her how his budget is between any between one dollar and a million you know million dollars now okay yes yeah, corona but people were still working during the corona you doing all this work yourself no contractors no nothing you ain't bringing nobody in to help come on scott you ain't got what you're saying you got and then when your car had to climb when you was getting that um that limousine you had to use a different car one and one ain't adding up to two. And Lindsay going to figure it out and she going to be going. Because she don't want you. She don't want you in that lip and you know it. You know. I'm surprised she gave you some ass. I really am. So that's all I got with this episode of Love at the Lockup. If you guys like the content, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If I miss anything, put it in the comments. And holla at your girl. Bye.